Hey guys, Sean C. Phillips with my brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping video. Today going to go out today, so things come out today, so things are on sale. Now today though, new release wise, the one big thing that's coming out today is the uh, Forever Purge. Uh, that one was releasing today. Also though, there's going to be a, um, it's going to be a Best Buy exclusive steelbook for the film Three from Hell. It's a really cool steelbook. I'm actually going to have a look at that uh, steelbook at the end of this video as well. But that's one of the other things that releases today. Also though, as I'm walking into Target, I have some really big news and I'm going to talk all about that as I'm walking into, into Target because that's why I always do the news when I walk into Target, but some really, really exciting stuff, stuff I'm really excited about for you guys to see and how you guys can help these projects. And they're all the ones that I directed. But also, though, at the end of this video is going to be a bunch of brand new uh, DVD, Blu-ray, and 4K reviews for some new things I received or re review and talk about for you guys. So definitely stay tuned for those at the end of this video. And as always, too, let me know what you guys thought of the DVDs, Blu-rays, and 4Ks that are reviewed, if you guys have seen them, what you guys thought of them, and also if you guys plan on picking any of them up. But anyway, though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today and get ready for the news. Like I said, I'm so excited for you guys to see these trailers. Well, I, I've sort of leaked a little news, but the more news will be coming in a second. Into Target we go. Yeah, so now I'll let you guys know some really exciting news. This is something, I, like I said, I am so excited about. As you guys know, I've been direct, you know, started directing films uh, starting in, you know, in May with Scream Bloody Murder. And now all the trailers are up for the movie. So you guys can see, I'm going to put the link below and you guys can see the trailers for all the films that I directed. I act in all the films as well. Uh, the one film is Scream Bloody Murder. And that's the one which stars Scout Taylor Compton from, you know, from Rob Zombie's Halloween. It has James Duvall from Donnie Darko. It has um, uh, Todd Bridges from different strokes is in the film. Uh, Vernon Wells from uh, The Road Warriors in the movie. Sean Whalen from, um, you know, uh, from uh, People Under the Stairs in the film. Uh, Tom Sizemore from one of my favorite movies of all time, Natural Born Killer. So we have an amazing cast and the trailer is up now for that one uh, in the link below. Also the trailer for Amityville Shark House. And that's one I'm so excited for you guys to see as well. Uh, that is up in there. And also the trailer for the film I just finished directing, which stars Lauren Francesca and James Duvall as well. Uh, and it's called called uh, Amityville uh, Karen, and that is up as well. Like I said, I am so excited for you guys to see these trailers. I cannot wait to hear what you guys think. You guys can leave comments below uh, this video letting me know what you guys think. Now, on the link, though, it's the Indiegogo campaign, so it's the finishing funds campaign uh, for the film. So basically, we're raising the finishing funds because, uh, you know, uh, Screen Bloody Murder is sold, and it's basically going through the delivery process, you know, to, to deliver it to the... Um, the streaming service. So we have to go through uh, quality control, uh, the music stuff, there's audio things we have to do, uh, closed captioning, so all these kind of things that you have to do for delivery process. And we're also using the, the funds for the music and stuff like that for Amityville Shark House. But like I said, guys, check out the link below and you guys can find out all about the film, find out how, you know, how the perks work and everything, all that kind of stuff as well. There's a whole bunch of different perks. There's lots of different producer perks uh, for all different films. So you guys can still get producer perks on all the films. There's combo perks if you guys want to produce you know a handful of the films uh, together uh, as well there's also some acting perks for future films that's going to be directing uh, coming up uh, there's one perk where you guys can be an alien expert in the movie uh, as well <laughs> you guys can be an um you know, an alien expert, and that's a self-film perk. That's for one of the next films coming up. But like I said, I'll have a link below, and you guys can find out all about it, guys. But thanks again for the support. Like I said, I am so excited about this. But like I said, let me know what you guys think of the trailers, and check out the links below. So let's take a look here in the front and see if they changed anything out. And this location seems like it hasn't really changed much of anything in the front in a while. Some of the ones that I was at last week, the other one, they like changed this whole section out and had a whole bunch of different things. There's a couple newer things like the like they have the random Black Widow DVD there and stuff like that, but nothing else major uh, changed out there. But we'll head over to the actual section though and see uh, if they have this stuff out in there. I feel like the main thing in here today is going to be the first, uh, the, you know, not first purge, the forever purge. Other than that though, I'm not sure what else they're going to have in here today. I think I said I think there's a couple other things today uh, as well. The only other thing I knew offhand was the three from hell best buy steel but oh, i can see from right here though the shelf looks totally 100 percent empty like i don't see one thing at all in it so that's definitely not a good sign i don't know why it's like none of the stuff from even last week looks like it's there all i'm seeing from here is batwoman that looks like that's the only thing in there but we'll see like i said i think we already see that there's nothing there whatsoever though so yeah i don't know if they even like changed out the actual spots here so it will say what's here but i don't know why they would have take out last week's stuff because fast nine um you know corella 
And those ones that were last Tuesday, so I don't know if maybe this location might have never actually put out any of the um, releases from last week, which might be the case. I don't think there was any exclusives or anything. This is interesting though. This is like a newer version here of Corpse Bride. I've never seen this one that has this, is it like a different slip cover on it or something? I don't, I don't really remember seeing that version of that with a slip cover like that for some reason. But let's see if there's anything over here. Like I'm not seeing anything new at all over here. No, it seems to be, and I don't see any spots for any of the stuff for this week put out or anything like that. No, at all though. But it is weird though. I guess that this location must have just never put out last Tuesday stuff or anything like that. So that's the only thing that I can guess. Into Walmart we go. So we'll head back live. And if you guys know, this is like, you know, the Walmart that for the past like forever has not had anything new at all. Like, I think like the last two weeks they have they put literally nothing on the shelves. This, this whole area, it, seems, it sort of seems like they don't want to like stock the movies and put the stuff out because you can tell, because this is, you know, this Walmart is directly across the street from that Target. So it's almost like they both read each other's mail and, and don't put the movies out. They're like, well, they didn't, so we don't have to. Let's see. I see a few things peeking through and I see some things, some stuff from last week here. Like we see these these two copies here, or these copies of Fast uh, 9, and then some of the Corellas are now out. But then you see, is there spots for, yeah, Forever Purge. So you see the spots for it, for the 4K 2796, Blu-ray 2296. So you see the spots for them. Let me see if there's anything else different in here that you can tell. Like I said, I think that was the main big thing that you were gonna see today. But when you look at this, it's just like craziness. You know what I mean? Like that, you know, you know what I mean? Like, and then last time I was showing this too, how like <laughs> they they won't dust this thing. You should really just write in here like du clean me or something like that through all this dust. Cause like, look at this. It's like, they don't, it's like, this is one of those things. It's like, you know, zero um, uh, F words given. <laughs> Let's see, there's a couple things here different though. I think some of these were last week. So they definitely did update this spot right here. So they have a couple of different ones. Uh, this was the one that I was, um, let you guys know about last week that I have a part in. I'm in here like talking about the, um, the history of the Tooth Fairy. So I'm in this one, it's called the Tooth Fairy, The Last Extraction. This one is 996. This one was last Tuesday. Uh, the Black Pumpkin, I think that came in a while ago, but they just got it in Walmart. Uh, that, but that was last Tuesday, they, they started carrying that. Uh, this one, I don't know what this is, Burrito? No, oh, it's like a Naruto like spinoff or something like that. Uh, the Equalizer Season 1, I believe that was last Tuesday. Uh, the, um, Alt the Dolly Parton Ultimate Collection here. And that's interesting because don't, you don't usually see Time Life uh, releases in stores. Uh, and I think some of these other ones were last week too uh, that I showed, but they, I didn't see this, them in this particular location. Uh, the Virgil, that one I didn't see out on the shelf last week, but that released last Tuesday. Uh, and, I, and same with Boys uh, from County Hell as well. Other than that, though, I don't see anything else different in here, though. It seems to be all the same different stuff in here. It doesn't look like there's anything different mixed in here, as far as I can tell. You always have to check down the bottoms, too, because sometimes down the bottoms, they randomly put stuff that you don't see anywhere. <laughs> like like that one, like Help I Shrunk My Friends, like that one came out a couple weeks back. And I hadn't seen that in here, and they just randomly put it down there on the bottom. So it's kind of like... That's sort of the spot when you don't know where to put something, you just go, just sort of put it down there. <laughs> it's, that's kind of funny. But yeah, as, as always though, nothing, nothing new from this week in here. So this, this Walmart, as always, takes the, takes the L. But we'll go to one of the other ones and see, you know, what they have out, hopefully. Fingers crossed, the other one that, I, that we've been going to lately, it's been having this stuff out. Hopefully they keep doing it. Because it's like, I feel like now that it's been going so well in that other location, it's gonna all of a sudden just start to fall apart and then they won't have anything out. But we shall see though, we shall see. Into the second Walmart we go. Yeah, well it's looking like this location might have been like it has been before because like I see the spots for Forever Purge, but nothing is out for this week's stuff. I don't see if there's anything else mixed in here. As far as I can tell, it doesn't look like it. Like I said, this location had done a really good job the last like three weeks. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like I had, a, like I said, I had a feeling that that kind of thing might happen. Let's see, is any of this stuff from this week? I think there might be some of them that were from this week. Like here's the five movie correct Lexington for Burt Purge. So you can kind of see what some of the other ones were going to be. But I, I believe Twist, 
uh, that one released today. And I actually thought this was actually a pretty cool movie. I like this one. It kind of had like an Ocean's Eleven kind of vibe and it stars Michael Caine. But I thought this was actually pretty good. I actually honestly like that one a lot. But I believe that one was today and it's $14.96 for the Blu-ray, $9.96 for the DVD. And then there's something here, I think this is new here, called like Maya the Bee Movie. I don't know what these are. There's like three of them here. Uh, that's $12.99. I think that might have been today. Uh, other than that though, I'm just making sure there's nothing else randomly mixed in here. I don't think that there was going to be, as far as I can remember, anything else in here today. Yeah, but also looking over here though, it doesn't look like anything else different here, as far as I can tell. I think this one may have been this week here. At least I don't remember seeing this one, Ultimate uh, 10 War Movie Collection here. Uh, but other than that, I think all these other ones for the past couple weeks, I don't see anything else randomly mixed in here or anything like that, as far as I can tell. But no, we'll head over to, um, you know, Best Buy now. And hopefully, though, you know, they have stuff out. Because it's going to be one of those days when it's like, no, um, you know, didn't see any of the new releases or no thumbnail picture for anything. They still have some of the um, uh, the Corella exclusive ones left, though. Their exclusive one that had the exclusive slipcover. Like I said, though, other than that, though, uh, nothing else in here today. But, well, like I said, we're going to head to Best Buy now. And... Hopefully they have uh, some of this stuff out. I always check here too, just in case there's anything like randomly mixed in in here. It doesn't look like anything. This is kind of like a mixture of like TV things and kind of just a whole very random mixture of stuff in here. There seems to be some more Halloween stuff in here as well. But yeah, like I said, just gonna probably head over to uh, you know Best Buy now and hopefully they have some of this stuff out today though. We shall see. Into Best Buy we go. Well, we're going to head back and see, and let's hope that they actually have some of the stuff out in here so we see, like, somewhere with some of the movies out. Like, I'm, I peeked over here first, and I'm, like, not seeing anything right here. Let's hope that, like, they don't not have the purge out even in here because like you can see right here this is Shawshank Redemption these are all from last week I haven't seen I saw some pictures though of people finding the um, Clockwork Orange uh, Best Buy exclusive steelbook I didn't see it that this week and there's, there's none here uh, this week but I have seen some people finding it I know people were saying that it wasn't online and stuff and people weren't seeing it oh luckily enough they have this, this stuff out in here so I don't have to go to another location but they do have the Forever Purge here, and it's uh, $22.99 for the Blu-ray of that one. I'm going to have a review of this one at the end of this video, and then it's uh, $27.99 for the uh, 4K of that one. And there is a five-movie set that I, I showed the price for it in the um, uh, Walmart, but I don't see the five-movie set in here. And the other one here that I was mentioning today was the Rob Zombie's Three from Hell Steelbook. And I'm going to show you guys a closer look at this one at the end of this video. But this is a really, really cool uh, steelbook. Because when you take this off, you see like the skeleton versions of the characters. It's a very, very cool one here. And that one is on $19.99. Is that the right price? Yeah, it's only $19.99. That's a really good price for that for a 4K steelbook as well. But that's definitely a, a cool one there. Other than that, though, like I said, I don't see any other different ones mixed in in here and they don't still don't have any of the Fast and Furious steelbooks from last Tuesday. Other than that though it doesn't look like there's anything else at all new here. Like I said I'll just check through here one last time to see if there was anything else randomly in here that I'm missing over anything like that but it doesn't look like it. This was the Fast and Furious the first movie steelbook that was from a while ago but this might have been I don't remember seeing this, so I don't know for sure. Maybe this was this week, this Robotech one, part one, the Macro Saga. That one's $44.99. Like I said, I don't I don't remember seeing this, but that doesn't mean for sure that it was this week. Is there anything else randomly else down there? Just trying to make sure I don't miss over anything. And there's some empty spots here, out of death. Those were a couple weeks back. Oh, so they th were going to have these. These were the other things that came out today uh, on ha the Halloween 4Ks. I, I knew there was something else. Uh, they do have Twist down here, the Blu-ray of Twist for $15.99, but the 4Ks of Halloween release today, part, they're going to have part one, part two. It doesn't look like they're going to have the other ones. The one that I kind of wanted to get on 4K because it's my favorite one to watch is the fourth film. No, sorry, not the fourth, but the third film. That's the one I kind of think I would like to get because I already have the box set and all the other editions of Halloween. So I don't think I'll get all of them unless they do like a full box set of them on 4K. But I think the, the, thir the third one is the one that I would get. And this one might have been a... I don't know if this was this week or this might have been a couple weeks ago, the Transformers 4K one. So that, that is cool that they are going to have some of those in here. I, I was wondering about that. Um, but I don't think... I think they're only going to have the first two. And I know they out release up till five, I believe. But I'm just trying to make sure 
seems to me that's all the different things in here today, though, as far as I can tell. So anyway, though, guys, that was all for my DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shop video today. Luckily enough, though, they had this stuff out in there because I was thinking, oh, man, if they don't have this stuff out in there, I'll have to go to, like, another Best Buy just to at least see some of the new releases and stuff like that because we didn't really see anything besides in there for the most part. But it is interesting, though, they're going to have some of those Halloween 4 cases. That was the one thing at the beginning of the intro. I, I knew there was something else that I was going to mention, and that was definitely the thing. I totally forgot about that. But if you guys saw them in your store, too, I get they might have, they probably saw out quickly I have a feeling they probably sold fast in there because I'm pretty sure they would have put them on the shelf they usually don't have like empty spots for the most part in there if they haven't put the stuff out usually not always though but I feel like it they probably sold pretty quickly uh, in there but let me know in the comments below though what you guys picked up on DVD blu-ray or 4k if you guys you know end up picking up anything today also though too like I said uh, let me know in the comments below uh, what you guys think of the trailers for the films that I directed I'm really excited for you guys to see these because there has been up until now uh, no clips whatsoever for any of the movies uh, released or anything since so the first time any of the stuff is out so you guys can see them and then like I said too, uh, check out on the Indiegogo where you guys see the trailer for about the all the perks and stuff like that and basically the, the perks are all to help uh, get Scream Bloody Murder uh, through the delivery process so we can get it released onto streaming that's the main hurdle that we're going through right now uh, to be honest with you guys is just getting that movie uh, through the all these deliverables fees and everything like that just so we can get it released but I can't wait for you guys to see it uh, you know when it, you know when it when we get it released but like I said once it's uh, the campaign is done uh, all the fees are going just to get this movie out there for you guys to see and I'm really excited for you guys to see this one uh, it's a total throwback 90s style slasher film like I said I've we got so lucky too with the cast that we got in that film and same with all the films like I am so excited about all these projects and so excited to get to do this stuff and this is this is really honestly guys what I'm having the most fun doing lately is doing these movies it's like it took me so long to get to the point of doing this uh, a long Long time like as old as I am now it took me till 35 you know I'm 36 now it took me till 35 to finally like start doing what I was supposed to do and what I had always you know planned to do uh, so I'm, I'm just glad I'm doing it and I'm glad that you like I said I'm, I really appreciate you guys being so supportive of everything here and I appreciate it beyond words guys I really do so like I said check out the campaign guys if you have any questions send me you know you can guys can comment below uh, about the perks or any of that kind of stuff and there's also we can do like private perks and stuff like that as well uh, but like I said leave comments below what you guys thought of the trailers anyway though guys now stay tuned for the brand new DVD and blu-ray reviews and and the first one I got here is from Shout Factory Scream Factory line. Now this is a movie which I, you know, was always hoping would come to Blu-ray. So I'm so glad that Scream Factory has finally released this one because this is like such an underrated but and super creepy movie. It's a movie here called Alone in the Dark, and this one has such a great cast. This stars Jack Palance, uh, Donald Pleasance, and Martin Landau. And this is one of those movies too. When I think of like um, movies in like mental hospitals, this is one of the ones that I always think of. And it's like I said, it's a really underrated movie. Uh, it's basically though a uh, about this doctor who comes into this mental hospital, this new doctor, and the people there, the the patients though, are not happy about this. They like the original the doctor that was there, and they basically go and it like sets them up in arms. And it's basically what they end up doing, and it, it's like them like, you know, basically coming after him and trying to take revenge and everything on him and his family. It's an amazing movie. Like I said, it's one of these movies that I feel like a lot of people have not seen, and it's an absolute must watch. Super creepy. Just the whole vibe of this movie is really creepy uh this one um has on here though a brand new 2k scan from the original um in interpositive uh looks great here the transfer on here they did an amazing job cleaning up the film it also has a brand new interview on here with the director has a commentary track on here with the director uh some interviews on here uh, cast interviews on here as well as a theatrical trailer as well but like i said if you guys have not seen this one this is definitely an absolute must watch uh, the next one here is from um uh, from shout factories uh screen factory line as well and this is also from ifc midnight and this is a movie here called the vigil and this is one that i was really really looking forward to watching because this one stars uh, Dave Davis who, who is at you know, the star of the film who I worked with years and years back on the film Ghost Shark uh, you know he was the star of the film Ghost Shark so I worked with him on that one so I was really interested in follow, you know seeing this movie he's been in tons of different films throughout the years he was in it even in Logan as the um, in the convenience store working there the, in the convenience store scene uh, but like this movie is basically though about it's essentially about that you know uh in the jewish culture in, in there's basically like they have after somebody dies in certain forms of, Jew, of the jewish religion like they talk about in the beginning of the movie like in the an expert like the writing where you go and like 
someone has to go and sit with the body of the of the person who had died after for like I think it's like was it 12 hours or six hours something like that and you stay there and then like I think it's called the sham shammer is what it's called and it's basically you have to stay there with the body overnight uh, and it's like a thing that you have to do. And um, Dave Davis's character, and it's one of these movies too when you find out more about this, his character as it goes along, but you find out that he like had left or something like that had happened. And like he gets brought in by his friend to go and, you know, be the shaman for this body. And it's basically, he goes there to this house and then the, the ones, was it the mother is there? I think it's the mother or the daughter. I can't remember. And he's basically, he's there uh, and... Essentially, though, weird sort of things start to happen. It's a really creepy, slow burn film. It's like really creepy, really, really well done uh, film. Really well acted. Dave Davis did an amazing job in this movie. Uh, this one has on here, though, uh, feature wise, this has the theatrical trailer uh, on this one. The next one here, this is um, uh, one that's an exclusive release, the st exclusive Steelbook release uh, to Best Buy. And Lionsgate sent over one of the exclusives to show you guys. And this is uh, for Rob Zombie's film uh, Three from Hell. And this is the unrated version. And this is a really, really cool uh, steelbook because when you see it, it has a slipcover on the steelbook and you see the characters and then when, this, when you slide the slipcover off, you see the versions of them as skeletons. So it's very cool. And then on the back, you see the coffins. And if you guys you know, don't know uh, Three from Hell, it's in the series, you know, Rob Zombie's Firefly series uh, trilogy, which was, you know, first House of a Thousand Corpses, then Devil's Rejects, and then Three from Hell. And this is basically about Otis and Baby's characters who were in prison, escaping from prison, and going on the run, and the people coming after them, and kind of the havoc that they go through and everything. And, you know, this was, I think this was the last... I don't. I think it was the second to last film that Sid Haig did before he passed away. The late Sid Haig, who was such a huge fan of, he was such a cool guy. Always would talk to him at conventions. Uh, really, really nice guy. And like one of those people that I miss. And like, you know, I've, I've started directing, and he's one of those people that I would have gone and tried to have gotten in one of my projects because I was such a fan of his. Uh, and like I said, really glad that he was still able to be in the movie, even though it was a small role. I was really glad they still were able to include him because he was really, really sick when they were making this. But like I said, still glad that he was able to be part. But this is a really, really brutal film, but always love, you know, Rob Zombie's movies. I'm honestly really looking forward to seeing what he does with the monsters. I, I don't know. I'm really excited. I'm really hoping, too, uh, that he gives Butch Patrick a cameo. I really, really hope he does. But I'll, take, I'll show you guys a little look inside here uh, as well. And here's a look you can see when you take out the discs. Here's the image behind it. And here's what it looks like when it's opened up like that. Like I said, I, I think it's really cool, too, how it's like has the um, slip cover on it. And when it slides out, how you see it's like them regular and then them is the dead versions. I thought that's a really cool uh, touch for this one. The next one here, this is one I just finished watching. I just like literally just finished watching now. And this is from Universal. And this is the um, the film here, The Forever Purge. And this is the newest film in the Purge series. I don't know which number they're at now. And because there's also the Purge TV series as well. Which I only saw a couple episodes of that series. So I don't know if like any, you ever, like they, you know, ever reference, like in this, in this movie, make any reference whatsoever to that movie, to that series. I don't think it does though. Because this is basically though uh, set in Texas. And so they had this setting for Purge because normally they're like in cities and like I think the last one was like in the big city uh, like in the um like a big city, like where they had like apartment complexes and everything. So I think for most parts they've been in the city, and then like the one the first one was in the suburbs, in the in the um, uh, like kind of the rich area. So this one now is in kind of the country in Texas, in the kind of a small town, sort of a middle of nowhere area. And it follows around this one guy who owns this ranch and his family, and then it follows around people that had come from Mexico uh, and sh shows where they're working and their their family and everything. And essentially though, it's about you know, um, instead of the purge, you know, the purge only would go for 12 hours. And in, in this universe, uh, the people that really like these, this bad group of people, they've gone and decided that they're tired of the way things are and everything and they're not happy. So this bad group of people have gone and decided to continue the purge on forever. They don't want the purge to end. So they want, when the purge, when everyone thinks that the purge ends in this movie, uh, cause like this is basically the movie really starts when the purge ends. And then it's like the people, uh, now have to try and survive for real because they were all kind of hiding away and then once the purge you know uh actually supposed to have ended after the 12 hours and they when they leave where they were hiding away then they realize that these this group of these bad people out there that want to you know continue it so they have to try and figure out what they're going to do and how they're going to get away and everything it's definitely a very different uh kind of vibe and everything i i liked it though like i said it's different uh there isn't as much of like the cool stylized masks in these in this one as as much there was still some of it but 
Some of the films, though, they were really, really into having lots and lots of, like, the stylized masks and really, like, theming the look and stuff like that. There's still some of that in here, like the first uh, kind of trap thing in here that you see when the one woman gets her head stuck in the thing. That was kind of, like, more of a throwback to some of those other ones, I thought, a little bit. Uh, and I liked the one, too, when it was, like, the ones, like, going, um, you know, I'm going to get your candy or something. But that was one of my favorite uh, Purge movies. I can't remember which one that was, if that was the third movie or not. But this one has on here, though, deleted scenes, uh, alternate story storyboard opening on here uh, as well. Uh, the next one here is from Warner Brothers. They sent out a free copy of this one. Late guys on this one is available. And this is an interesting one here. This is um an animated version of Night of the Living Dead. So this is Night of the Animated Dead. So this is taking the original story of Night of the Living Dead. It has new voice actors and everything in here uh, doing the voices. It has like Catherine Isabel, you know, from, um, uh, you know, Ginger Snaps is one of the actresses doing the voices in here. Uh, Josh Darmel isn't doing a voice in here. Uh, and Will Sasso. Uh, it's basically, though, you know, like I said, an animated version of Night of the Living Dead. So, and they did one years and years back as well, which I think was like lots of different animators coming together to put it together. I think it was something like that. And this is, though, done, uh, you know, as an animated version, which I thought was actually pretty cool. And they, they made it a little bit more uh, brutal than, you know, George Romero's, because the uh, Tom Savini's one was a little bit more of the brutal version. So it's kind of like a little bit of a mixture of both. It has a lot more of the, the way they have, like, the zombies getting attacked and stuff like that, and the gore and everything is much more like uh, Savini's Night of the Living Dead. So it's kind of, like I said, a mixture of both of them. But it's the same story, though, about, you know, the brother and sister going to see the one's uh, grave and then they end up seeing a zombie out there it attacks and kills the brother and then she ends up going and hiding out in the farmhouse and then the of course the people in the farmhouse and they're all like barricade themselves in and everything like that and have to try and survive and figure out what they're going to do but like I said it was a cool different version of the of, of Night of the Living Dead but like I said done as an animated version and this one has on here though feature wise it has a making of uh, animated uh, sorry making of animating the dead uh, featurette on this one and the next one I got here is from Time Life. And this one here is the ultimate Richard Pryor collection here, the Uncensored Collection. Now, when it comes to stand-up comedians, Richard Pryor is definitely one of my number one top stand-up comedians. I would say, to me, when it comes to top stand-up comedians ever, it would be Richard Pryor, uh, uh, Roddy Dangerfield, uh, Sam Kinison, uh, George Carlin, uh, you know... Um, Dave Chappelle, uh, Eddie Murphy, and then probably Robin Williams are probably like my top favorite ever. And I think Ronnie Dangerfield is probably my all-time favorite. And then honestly, Richard Pryor is right after because I, I absolutely love Richard Pryor. I really like kind of uh, out there kind of, you know, dirty jokes and stuff like that. And, and they are all kind of the king of that. And Richard Pryor is the king too of not really caring what he said. And, you know, expect like really shocking, crazy stuff. And I always loved his stuff. I always loved his films, uh, everything. Uh, like I said here, this is a 12 disc collection here. And I'm going to show you guys though a look inside of here uh, as well. And it also has a booklet in here, the, uh, the Ultra Richard Pryor uh, booklet, which has some stuff, like pictures of him uh, from, and, and, and excerpts about his life and stuff like that in here as well it has like um kind of quotes and things like that here uh different kinds of uh quotes from i think they're from richard Pryor. yeah richard Pryor's quotes and stuff like that on here uh as well but it, and it also shows you too what's on each of the different discs in here uh, as well. So I'll go through some of the stuff that's on here. Like it has like, uh, like I said, it's a three disc set here, but it has you know three different discs, but it has thirteen discs in total with three sets here. The first one though is a documentary on Richard Pryor. This one is called "I Am Richard Pryor," and this was a documentary which I believe was for Paramount, and this was from 2019 was when this one was uh, produced. But then it also has in here though this is the two different volume sets. This is Volume 1, Uncensored. And this one has in here, this is a six-disc collection, which has Richard Pryor's four full-length concert films, uh, Living and Smoking, Live in Concert, Live on the Sunset Strip, and Here and Now, together for the first time. It also has on Richard, uh, Richard's groundbreaking 1977 NBC special, on here, it has four innovative, um, controversial episodes of the Richard Pryor show on here, featuring uh, Robin Williams, Sandra Bernhard, Tim Reed, um, on here. Also has, uh, never-before-seen release footage from uh, Richard Pryor's infamous first film, uh, on here. Uh, original series opening and deleted scenes from the Richard Pryor show. A uh, no-holds-bards look, uh, interviews with Richard Pryor's widow on here. And here's a look, though, inside at the discs. 
And the other one here, this is the uh, volume two of the set. This one has Richard Pryor's most memorable TV appearances on The Merv Griffith Show, The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, and, Dick, and The Dick Cavett Show. Also has on here uh, Richard's uh, five episodes of Richard's Off the Wall Children's uh, Show, Richard's Place on here, the moving um, autobiographic feature, uh, Joe, Joe Dancer, The Life is Calling, uh, rare footage, footage from uh, Richard's final show at the Comedy Store, uh, the award-winning documentary Amit the Logic Interviews, with Mel Brooks on here, Quincy Jones, Willie Nelson, and more. The Harris documentary, I Ain't uh, Short, I Ain't Dead Yet. And also has on here uh, never-before-seen release footage from American cinema cine Cinematic, a tribute to Richard Pryor, as well as a brand-new uh, interview on here with Richard, um, with Jennifer Lee Pryor uh, here uh, as well. But like I said, a really, really cool collection. So if you guys are a fan of Richard Pryor, this is a great set that you guys can get from Time Life. And the next ones I got here are all from Kino Larber, and they're all from the Kino Studio Classics line. And the first two are also both 70s TV movies. And if you know me, I absolutely love 70s TV movies. Like, two of my favorite ones of all time, Time, or if you guys know the videos, I've talked about these ones a lot, is Bad Ronald and then Crawl Space. Now, not the Klaus Kinski one, the 1970s TV movie one, which is like impossible to find. So hopefully, maybe Kino could, if since they're putting out TV movies now on Blu-ray uh, and like remastering them, maybe that would be one, uh, you know, would be really cool. Uh, to, you know, because that one, like I said, it's impossible to find. I probably, there's a a film transfer of that movie somewhere that they could transfer it from. Uh, but the first two ones here, like I said, are both TV movies. And the first one here is one called The Victim, which stars Elizabeth Montgomery, and the other one is called Scream uh, Pretty Peggy, which stars Betty Davis. Now, The Victim is one, it's basically, though, about, you know, Elizabeth Montgomery's character who goes to see her sister, and she's like, you know, who lives in this farmhouse out in the middle of nowhere. She basically gets out there, and the sister is missing. It's like in the middle of a rainstorm and everything. And it's basically though, it's kind of about there's whoever we you know was involved with this miss her sister going missing is out there. And it's basically about her kind of out there in the middle of nowhere where weird things start to happen. And everything and isn't it a crazy crazy movie? And this one has on here though a commentary track on here with film historian Amanda Ray's a newly commissioned art by Vince Evans as well as trailers on this one here as well. And this is one of those ones too. You know I was thinking a lot of these '70s TV movies. You know when they have like new artwork and stuff on them. I bet for a lot of these, uh, there's probably not even poster artwork. I, I don't know if, like, for TV movies back in the day, if there ever was, like, posters made that they would put, like, in magazines and stuff to advertise them. Or I'm, I'm talking mainly, like, the 70s ones. I really don't know. Uh, and the other one, like I said here, was Scream Pretty Peggy. And this one here is basically, though, about this woman who goes to, to you know, to be, you know, be a housekeeper at this house. Uh, she gets, you know, brought in there to, to work there and everything. And she thinks she's going to be for this guy and her, her mother. There, but then it turns out that when she gets there, there ends up being this the one sister is in the house as well. And it's this crazy woman in the house. So it's kind of like it's, they did a lot of kind of movies like this back, you know, then, like, where it was, like, you know, kind of, like, stuck in a house with a crazy person, and, like, they did, they did a lot of those ones, and to me, I always like those kind of things when you're, like, like stuck with somebody totally nuts. I, I love those kind of things, and this is basically, like, stuck in a house with a crazy person. <laughs> That's essentially what this is. But this one has on here, though, a commentary track with film historians Tori Harworth and Nathaniel Thomas, uh, and also has on here a newly commissioned artwork by Vince Evans, and as well as a TV spot uh, as well. And the next one here, this is from Kino as well, from the Kino uh, Studio Classics line, and this is one that I think I, I feel like I might have like seen this one like on like VHS as a kid or on like USA Up All Night or something like that back in the day. And it's one here called uh, The Pursuit of DB Cooper, and this is a fun movie. Uh, this is you know stars Robert Duvall, uh, Trent Williams. And it's basically though like the it's kind of, I don't know if it's like considered the full true story of it, but it's basically though about like DB Cooper's character who like took all this money and like you know hell you know skydived off of this plane and it's basically about the people who are trying to come after him so it's like Robert Duvall's character trying to track him down and everything like that and it has like sort of like an adventure movie kind of feel as well like kind of those like uh, it has like sort of like um, an Indiana Jones like Romance in the Stone sort of thing in there like a little tiny bit of an aspect of that like with him out there trying to get away and everything it has some kind of crazy stuff of him you know coming after him and everything uh, and like I said this one has on here though feature wise a commentary track on here with the screenwriter on here 
as well as a uh, film historian, uh, TV spots, and a theatrical trailer on this one. And all these ones, too, uh, picture quality look great here uh, on Blu-ray. And the next one I got here is from MPI. It's a movie here called Witching and Bitching. Now, this is one that I've heard a lot about. And this one had just released in the U.S. now. I'm not sure if this released in other countries before because it has a 2013 copyright. So I'm not, like I said, I'm not sure if it just released here and has been, you know, released in other countries for a while now or not. But this is a really, really fun movie. It's basically, though, about these guys who ended up robbing this bank. Bank. And they wore all these kind of wore, you know costumes and stuff that they were wearing with her in the bank robbery. And basically, though, the one had to bring his son along, and they end up trying to figure out what they're going to do and how to get away and hiding out and everything. And they come through this small town, and basically, though, the small town is a whole town full of witches. So it kind of becomes this whole thing where they end up getting away from this bank robbery, and then they come into a whole other problem of this town of witches, and people are kind of coming after them there. And it goes through this all these kind of crazy, crazy stuff. It has like vibes. It says on the back here a comic horror romp on like anything you've seen it's Tarantino meets Avandora if you know the director's other movies he did like um I think it was was it the last circus he did? He did a handful of movies. Yeah, last the last circus uh and a few of them that I think was it uh, just released on 4K recently as well. Uh, but if you guys know his movies, it has that similar vibe. But it's a really fun, super crazy movie here. Uh, and then uh, the next one here, and these ones are both all from uh, MovieZing.com. And I have a link below where you guys can order these ones for the best price. This movie was so fun. Uh, I, I, this was great. And ha this has a good message, too, about like bullying and stuff, too. And it's a movie here called The Zombie Club. And it's like... Um, I love this this crazy cover. And the one actor in here, too, I kept on thinking, what do I know this guy from? And he was in Promising Young Woman. He was great. He's so good in this movie, this guy. He's somebody that, one of those people I, I really would love to work with on a, get in a film because he was really, really good. There was some great people, actors in here. Dean Cain, too, uh, is in this movie. And probably this is my favorite thing I've ever seen Dean Cain in. He like played like a really different kind of role and had so much heart behind the character and everything. Like I said, this is a really, very, really good movie dealing with uh, bullying. But then it becomes kind of a horror movie it's kind of done there was a movie that was um was like a there was like, i can't remember what it was i saw it in theaters and had a really limited release this girl it was about this girl uh i think it was joey king's sister was in the star of the movie it was kind of her talking about this bullying and what had happened and everything and this was kind of presented that same way about this girl in her computer talking about uh bullying and talking about how she has this club of anti-bullying and how everything changed and then it's it essentially though it's about this club and uh they had like a, a shipment of frogs that came in and the one guy's like the scientist doctor in the group scientist in the group teacher and he ends up like uh, they all end up infected by the frogs. Like the frogs, like let this gas out and turn them into zombies, and then they kind of have to figure out what they're going to do and try and figure out how to, you know, reverse everything. It's like I said, it, the movie goes in these kind of crazy directions, but it it feels to me so much like, you know, almost like Goosebumps mixed with like. I, it's like a mixture of so many different things uh, and, and some people might not like it just because it's so many genres in one just kind of meshed together and it starts off like it's going to be very different and then it becomes like a, this sort of horror movie in a sense and it, but it also really feels like something too that could play on the Disney Channel honestly too I, it has that kind of, sort of vibe which I feel like it probably could uh, at some point uh, the next one here is also from MovieZing.com as well and it's a movie here called uh, How It Ends and this one here too um was it was it United yeah United Artists was the one company behind this one as well. Uh, this is basically though, and this was actually all filmed during you know everything that's going on right now. So this was shot like with what's going on in the world, uh, and I can relate to shooting you know uh, during all of that and the precautions and all the things that you have to do. So I, I definitely know. Uh, but basically though, uh, you know, this has a great cast in here. This has Livia Wild, Helen Hunt's in here, Fred Armisen, uh, Nick Kroll is in the movie. Uh, but it's basically though about like the end of the world. And it's kind of like these people, uh, this, there was this one woman who, uh, she basically talks to her younger self. Like she kind of has like an imaginary friend, but it's essentially her younger self. And you know, it's the end of the world is coming. And it's like, I think it's like going to come at like a number of hours. And essentially she wants to go and try and repair her relationship with people and kind of repair these things that happen so it's kind of her going around from place to place meeting different people it's one of those kind of films that has that vibe but a really really great uh movie like i said, and I said it's really interesting too like i said how it was all shot now and everything with and early on too 
with everything too, with the precautions and everything. Uh, the next one here, uh, and this is um, from uh, Acorn Media uh, International, and this is also a Shutter exclusive, and this is one here called uh, Power. And this was also this is a UK release, but this is also a region free release, so you guys can watch this one in any US uh, Blu-ray player. It doesn't have any region code locking on this one, but this is essentially a, you know not set in 1974, and it's about this woman who goes to you know as is a nurse, and she goes to you know gets the job uh, be at this hospital and everything, and they're having like in in you know in London and stuff, they're having all these different kind of electro outages going on, the power is going out and stuff like that. Is I think it was like something was going on, electrical blackouts and stuff like that. And they basically though, she ends up working there during the time when they're going to have an electrical blackout, like a planned blackout. And so essentially about her there, pretty much by herself. And then these weird sort of things that start to happen in this hospital, and she starts to hearing weird things. It's a very extremely creepy slow burn movie. I always love these movies set in like and mental hospitals and this kind of stuff like my favorite is always session nine but this one has on here feature wise a commentary track on here as well as a behind the scenes a photo gallery uh, on this one and the next one i got here is also a uk release and this one here is from second sight films now this one though this one is region b locked so keep that in mind you guys would have to have an all region a uh, blu-ray player to play this one but this is the brand new collection edition here of the film paranormal activity like i said this is from second sight films here it's a really cool hardbound uh, release here and i'll show you guys a look inside and everything that's in here but this is one of those movies too that i remember this so much when this came out this is a film too that was such like a trendsetter of the time because like when you think about how this was done it was really like one of those things that wasn't super complicated a lot of people could have done this because it was just with kind of pretty much consumer cameras as consumer equipment and it was not a super complicated idea it was kind of the same as with blair witch when when blair witch came out and everyone was trying to copy it paranormal activity there is a, a, a you know a lot of people copying it, but there's also a lot of parodies of paranormal activity i thought it's the same thing that happened with Blair Witch. But, you know, that basically, if you guys don't know the story of the, the original Paranormal Activity movie, it was basically this couple had weird sort of things that were happening in the house, and they ended up wanting to try and document. So they put cameras all throughout the house, hidden cameras in the bedroom, you know, cameras all over the place trying to see what they saw. And it's like investigation day one, the one night you see something weird move, the one night you see, like, the one woman, she gets up and starts, like, moving like this and doing weird stuff over the bed. So it's kind of like, it goes all throughout what happens in this house and everything. It's very, very creepy uh, film. I'll show you guys though a look inside here. It has a booklet which has some pictures, behind the scenes stuff, you know, facts and stuff like that about the production and that kind of stuff here uh, as well. But also has some um, lobby cards here uh, as well. So I'll show you guys. See like like night one, September 18th, 2006. 2006. So it has like uh, stills and stuff like that here uh, from uh, the movie and everything. Like I said, it's a lot of stuff like through the, the bedrooms and like, you know, through the bed and seeing weird sort of things start to happen and stuff like that. Like I said, I remember this so much. Like I said, when this first came out, the amount of people talking about it and like how it was just like the biggest thing of all time. I don't know what the next like movie like that is going to be where you where you hear about it like to that level. I really don't know what will be next like that. Uh, the next one here is from a Vinegar Syndrome. It's a movie here called Shallow Grave. Now this is not the Shallow Grave one that Danny Boyle directed. I think that was like 94. This is a different one. This one here is from 84. And this is basically though about these people who are going through this small town, uh, you know, these college girls going through through this this town i think it was in florida or the, the way to florida and basically though when they go through the town they, they end up seeing this woman getting attacked and she gets killed and basically though the person who did it you know sees the one and kind of comes after them and it becomes one of those whole like cat and mouse kind of game movies where the person is coming after them and it becomes this crazy intense thing and you know you find out who the guy is and it's even worse and it becomes like a living nightmare for them kind of has a vibe a little bit of like um I guess like Mother's Day somewhat. It has that vibe a little bit. This one has on here though, newly re uh, on here feature-wise, newly restored and scanned in uh, 2K from the original 35mm vault elements. It looks great here though. That's the thing, Vinegar Syndrome always does such an amazing job cleaning up their releases. Has a brand new commentary track on here with the director, commentary track on here with the hysteria continues, which I always love their commentary tracks. They do it, they always like have lots of inside knowledges about the movies. Sometimes they make ridiculous jokes about them, but they're great commentaries. Uh, has an interview on here with the director it has on here though interview on here with the producer as well on this one the next ones here these are all from vinegar syndrome as well but they're from their partner label so you guys can get these on their website as well now, the first one is one that i was really excited when i heard they were putting this on blu-ray and this is my friend uh, chris lamartina's film and i and i worked with chris on um president's day if you guys ever seen that movie uh, and dead meat james talked about that if you guys want to look that up you guys can see a lot of clips and stuff from that and he also directed witch's brew and he had, and he, this is the other film that he did and this 
this was the WNUF Halloween special. And in this one too, I'm not going to tell you where, but I do a uh, I do do a voice in one of the commercials in this. So like I said, I'm not going to tell you where, but if you guys have seen this one, uh, let me know if you know uh, where uh, it is. I believe you can. I believe it's also. I don't know if it's still on there, but I believe this has been on Shutter as well. This movie, uh, but it's done like a old, uh, you know, kind of like TV special that would aired on like you know during the 80s. So it's supposed to be like a news special, kind of Halloween special during the 80s when weird things happen. So it's done to look, you know, shot on VHS. And I remember they were saying how they edited on VHS tapes to give it like the real look and everything. So it really feels like this like lost Halloween special news special thing. So it's a great special. He did an amazing job uh, on this. And on here too, it has feature wise a commentary track on here with Chris Lamartina, a 2001 group commentary track on here, cutting room commercials, outtakes and bloopers, rewinding the fast forward segments on here, a theatrical trailer on here, a, a promo, a Halloween a, um, album promo on here, a long lost UFFs commercials rediscovered for the 2002 uh, uh, 2021 uh, uh, release one here. And the next one here, this is from Vinegar Cinema as well, and this is from their partner label. I think the company is called like Saturn's Core is the name of the company. And this is one here called Duck the Carbine High uh, Massacre. And this is directed by William Hellfire. And this is a very controversial movie. This was a controversial movie too because also they shot it in the school. And I, I think they like went in there and didn't film it without permission, but it's about these guys that are school shooters and stuff. It's a really, I don't want to get into the whole detail of this movie because it's, it's very... Uh, it's a very hard to watch film. It was very well done. Uh, you know, I, I met William Hellfire years back at the um, Chiller Convention. Then, then we worked together on a movie, which I hope someday releases called Blood Wings. Uh, it was like me and like, um, uh, uh, you know. Um, then Ed Quigley was in the movie, and Johnny Link, you know, I don't know if you guys remember, like, these, uh, back in the day, like, those seduction cinema movies, there was a guy in them who was like, Johnny Link here! Yeah, <laughs> that guy. Uh, but this is a really well-done movie. Like I said, it's very hard to watch and everything, though, but it has on here, though, a feature-wise newly transfer of the original director's cut from the original uh, SVHS master tapes, because this was shot on Super VHS. It has a new commentary track on here, a new feature, a featurette on here, on here, archive of 2004 interviews, a collection of short, uh, short 16 millimeter films from co-director Joey Smack. Joey Smack uh, passed away recently. Uh, it has on here extended live performances on here, isolated soundtrack, deleted scenes, trailers, and photo gallery uh, on this one. And this one's one here I just want you guys to know was available. And this is one here called uh, Wired uh, Wild Wild Tigers. Ha I, I, so it's Wild Tigers. I have known here, and this is from um, Altered Innocence. Like I said, I just want I just want to let you guys know uh, was available. Available. And this is a deluxe edition here, which includes a new cut uh, and mix of the film on here, deleted scenes on here, a brand new interview on here, audition tapes, a 2004 interview, uh, un unfinished projects on here, short films, it has some music videos on here uh, as well, and it also has a poster uh, as well for the film. Like I said, this is one that I just want you guys to know was available um, as well. And the last ones here are from the Criterion Collection. This is one here, uh, uh, this is a movie from 2000 called Love and Basketball. This is basically, though, uh, you know, it stars, you know, Omar Epps. And it's basically, though, about how he's kind of like him and his, his friend's character, who both of them were friends, and that kind of, it's their bond was basketball. And kind of like kind of how they were going up in the system and kind of how they had a relationship, but like they had like in, in their life a lot of ups and downs and things like that. And the kind of problems that were going on with kind of excelling in the field and everything and their own personal problems and just a lot of things. It was a, It's a really, really well done movie. I remember this one really well back in the day when this one first released. But this one has on here a brand new 4k um digital restoration on here supervised by supervised by the director a great transfer on here it has on here though uh it has commentaries from 2000 on here it has um making of documentary on here brand new making of documentary it has on here um which has interviews on here uh con new um convention among uh, WNBA legend on here, deleted scenes, uh, two short films on here uh, as well, and I'll show you guys the look inside. There's also uh, a fold-out booklet in here with stuff about the production uh, here as well. And the other one here is one that I just want you guys to know was available, uh, that was available as well from the Criterion Collection. It's a movie here called uh, The Damned, and this one here it has a brand new 2K restoration here, and it also has an alternate Italian language soundtrack, uh, interview from 1970 with the director on here, uh, 
uh, a, a set, a behind-the-scenes documentary on here, a new interview on here with um, Scholar uh, about the films, uh, about the film, a trailer on here uh, as well. And I'll show you guys a little look inside here as well. Uh, this one has a, a fold-out kind of poster here. Uh, for the movie here as well. Like I said, just want you guys to know that this one was available. But anyway, though, guys, that was all for the review portion of this video. And like I always say, if you guys enjoy these DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping videos, uh, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Thanks again for watching and subscribing. I'll see you guys later. Bye.